Welcome to Erie, New England. This time, we're at Haunted Fort Adams. Fort Adams is located in the Narragansett Bay of Rhode Island, and this bay is extremely large. So even during colonial times, it was seen as a place that was necessary to have coastal defenses in place. These began as more of an earthworks defense and not as full structures until the establishment of the United States in 1776 after the Revolutionary War. It was clear then that these battlements on the coast needed to have a little more oomph to them in case of future situations. In 1799, the fort officially opened, and over time, as years went by and different situations came up, the fort was altered, updated, rebuilt in certain areas, and kept modern until the 1950s when it was decommissioned and then turned into a state park. Strangely enough, the paranormal activity reported at this place goes back to the construction of it. Several men were killed while constructing the fort, and it is said that their spirits now roam the grounds. This was our last stop before leaving Rhode Island, so Ryan and I took the self-guided tour to wander the grounds on our own. Oh, this is cool. This is neat. Spooky happenings at the fort, everybody. Look, it's in disrepair, guys. This is a big part of our history in this country right here. There's stairs here, too. Oh, neat. Just Staircases. Right in the fall, but you see the hand split lath around the stone. You see the framing around the stone, and it's yep. just really interesting. Now, we all know after the Revolutionary War, through the Civil War and World War I and II, Newport was not attacked. And so the defense system, while remaining modern until after World War II, was manned, stationed, and fully ready for battle, but never saw any action. So by the common but wholly unfounded and unproved logic of the paranormal, how would this place have any ghosts if not for any tragedy? However, there are other untimely situations that took place during this fort's life that may lead to the haunting things that have been reported over the years and even now. A series of mysterious deaths that have taken place at the fort since it opened have caused many to think that's where the ghosts are coming from, because many of these deaths were in fact murders. The first death by murder at Fort Adams occurred on July 4, 1819. After a night of drinking and celebrating Independence Day, a man named Private William G. Cornell shot and killed his fellow Private William Kane point blank. There's nothing to say as to why or how such a thing came around, but celebration, alcohol, one can make a few inferences. During the Spanish flu outbreak in 1918, the fort lost five residents to the virus. This may or may not attribute something to the uncanny activity of hearing voices cry out from the different stone hallways and corridors surrounding the area. You're trapped in the fort. Wow. Look at how, look at how large. Watch that like, oh, over there. Oh, Of that. D wow. I want to go in. Wow. Another fireplace bricked up and piped, so maybe 
put a stove there instead of, or a wood stove instead of a fireplace. For both of them. Could be spooky in here at night. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You see the wood still on the ceiling where all the ceiling would have been attached? Yeah. That's pretty neat. I like that. Very cool. That's awesome. Neat. During the last week of January, 1925, the frozen remains of an Irish immigrant, a woman named Mary Gleason, were found in an artillery ditch at the fort by some children who had been sledding nearby. While a man by the name of Private George Cordy did confess to the murder claiming he was a former boyfriend and was jealous of her current engagement, it was investigated and found out the man wasn't even in Newport the night of the murder, and so the coroner ruled the death accidental. Some people, however, believe otherwise. It was the famous show Ghost Hunters, where the TAPS team heard ghostly kids and women's voices in an area near the bakery. Some would find it logical to tie that kind of paranormal activity to the story of Mary Gleason. We'll never know for sure, though. I'm realizing it was a balcony that was all around this thing, and those are the only poles we're seeing still intact. The black, that was that railing that must have gone all the way across, and that's the only piece that's left of it. We have to wonder if it isn't in fact the death and tragedy that happened at this place that causes the paranormal activity, but perhaps the sheer amount of life and lived experiences that have occurred on the property. For hundreds of years, the space has been in use, with different situations and emotions playing out during all of it, which could in fact maybe lead to the emotional imprints and echoes that resonate through the stone structures themselves. Whether, as reports go, it's the feeling of being poked, hair pulled or prodded, in various historic areas, or feeling small rocks and pebbles being thrown at them from out of the dark, these might in fact just be echoes of the living that replay now as a haunting. Battle stations! <laughs> Battle stations! This place ever saw anything remotely resembling conflict. I'm guessing it's just been a bit quiet if they said they had leisure activity. <laughs> With the sheer size of Fort Adams and the centuries of history that it's encompassed, there's no wonder many of the reports of paranormal activity are that of black shadows and shadowy figures darting between the endless open doorways, windows, and corridors in the whole structure. Accompanying that with the physical phantom touches and disembodied voices of men, women, and even children, Fort Adams might hold a little more mystery, no matter how the hauntings came to be than people might realize. Thank you for joining us in Erie, New England. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and stay weird. <laughs>